my first inst instinct was to ans to say that you cannot separate the artist from the art uh, because I'm an intentionalist and believe that uh, meaningful marks and signs are only meaningful uh, if one assumes that they've been produced uh, or designed by an intentional being. Therefore, the separation of the artist from the artist is, from my point of view, impossible. Uh, but then I had a second thought, recalling a colleague who was a terrible person. Uh, he was absolutely uh, untrustworthy, malevolent, uh, said and did horrible things behind your back. But when I invited him into my class uh, to explain a technical matter that I would not have been able to explain, he bent himself to the task in a way so pure that you could see, uh, almost see, uh, as he began to talk, uh, that the zeal uh, for his uh, subject burnt away all the malign aspects of his personality. And he was another person. And so it occurred to me that no doubt there were artists like that. And then I recalled that T.S. Eliot, in Tradition and the Individual Talent, had ex indeed defined art and artistry as the extinction of personality. Uh, so that the artist, rather than bringing with him and transmuting all uh, of the uh, him or her and, and, and transmuting all of the aspects of a personality, instead concentrates and focuses in the way that my colleague did. But then, this is all a but then, uh, but then I remembered Woody Allen. Uh, I, I live part of the year in Manhattan, and as I went around the corner from my apartment last year, there was a Woody Allen movie being made. So Woody Allen is right there. Uh, what am I to do with that? And of course, you can't separate Woody Allen from Woody Allen movies because Woody Allen movies are all about Woody Allen. So much so that distinguished actors uh, and actresses uh, like Michael Caine and others uh, speak in Woody Allen tones uh, when they appear um, in his movies. So I thought there must be a distinction between authors uh, who perform as my colleague did and burn away all of their moral warts and artists like Woody Allen who make art out of their moral warts. So therefore it would be uh, a wrong act of critical deportment to ignore that. And then I thought, <laughs> there's also the distance question. Caravaggio murdered somebody. The great English poet Ben Jonson, as far as we know, murdered two people. It might have been more. But when I see a Caravaggio uh, a painting or read a Ben Jonson poem, I'm not thinking about that. Apparently, Robert Frost, a great American poet, was also, according to his biographers, one of the vilest people who ever lived, <laughs> betraying and being cruel to everyone. But when I read The Road Not Taken, I don't think of that. So that led me to another thought. Maybe it's distance. Maybe the museum effect kicks in. And when they're dead or hanging somewhere or part of the Harvard Library of Classics, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. And then my final thought was that perhaps this question, the question that we've been asked here to consider, um, is in fact misstated because it assumes the distinct and stable identity of both the artist and the work of art. But in the last 40 years, those assumptions have been exploded uh, by performance artists uh, like Emma, uh, by people who make art out of garbage uh, and uh, then strew it around the floor, uh, uh, by those like uh, Robert Rauschenberg who makes art by erasing uh, a drawing of de Kooning's uh, and, say, and then says that destruction is in fact the hallmark of art. 